right. Hello there. Welcome to Insuring Your Well-Being. I am Dennis James, the biking, dancing, insurance man with various insurance planning. And I am really excited about this topic today. And we have seniors helping seniors. And I have two gurus here. And you're going to understand that after I finish up. I have Nikki Main, who is going to be briefly talking about who she is and uh, how she got into the business. And then another super fly, great guy that I had met uh, not that long ago, but he's really a unique guy and he's going to bring a lot of te- attention and information to uh, what seniors helping seniors is all about. And that's, I'm so glad you're here. So let's start with you, Nikki. Well, thank you for having us. Um, I'm Nikki Maine. And basically, Seniors Helping Seniors um, just really spoke to me when I first heard about it. I've been in healthcare a little over 40 years, and I got into the senior arena, I would say, uh, sometime in the early 2000s, where I was working at a number of different senior living communities doing admissions and different types of Mm -hmm. things like that. And so um, when I had seen Seniors Helping Seniors initially, I was going to be just a caregiver, just as uh, some extra income over and above what I was already doing at the time. All right. And then I met with Dawn and Bob, and I really fell in love with the model of seniors yeah, helping seniors. Dawn and uh, Bob are the... The owners. Dawn and Bob Neely are the owners of Seniors Helping Seniors gotcha. here in Lake Orion, Oxford area. Absolutely. And so... Um, I met with both of them, Mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed hearing about our model, which is so unique. Uh, Our caregivers are active seniors themselves, so it's kind of baked into that name, Seniors Helping Seniors. Mm -hmm. Um, They were the first in Michigan. We have 230 across the United States. Um, The initial Seniors Helping Seniors uh, operation was started in Pennsylvania in Reading, Pennsylvania, and Bob and Dawn met with the owners and really thought that that this was a model that was just fabulous. It really spoke to them as well. So when they found out that it wasn't here in Michigan, they decided to open up uh, the first branch that we have uh, here in Oakland County. Okay. So uh, I started, they started 16 years ago, Mm -hmm. and I began my journey with them 11 years ago as their marketer. Yeah, you do so many things too. Uh, you're you, a lot of things outside of just seniors helping seniors, just helping the whole network, bringing people together that are running different assisted living facilities, or you name it. Yes. When it comes to the senior community, that's how you're helping people, and so that's really cool. Yes. And the last thing I. Um, you are a violinist, I believe that is true. I am a violinist. I've played for 50 years. Wow. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard when you put a number to it, right? But um, it's really wonderful because I'm able to marry those two things together. That is a cool Working thing. with seniors yeah. and playing my music for them. And yeah. as we all know, music really, really is fabulous yeah. for memory. That is so cool, right? So that's, in, yeah, I, I get all that and it's cool. Yeah. All right, my man, Joe. Joe, help us out. Tell us a little bit about yourself, bud. Yeah, good morning, Dennis, and good morning to all of the uh, listeners and those viewing. Thankful to be here with you all this morning. And so uh, my wife, and sh- my wife, her name is Sheila. The mm-hmm. two of us, we purchased uh, one of the Seniors Helping Seniors franchise locations to join the team okay. a little over a year ago. Right. And similar to what Nikki spoke of, yeah. what appealed to us yeah. is the culture, the mission, the values of the owners, uh, not only the primary owners of the outfits all across the country, but local owners such as Don and Bob. We had a chance to meet with them prior to purchasing. Mm-hmm. And we felt the true mission and compassion behind yeah. seniors helping seniors wanting to help others. Yeah. And so that's why my wife and I joined. So um, what initially led us to it, both of us had the experience, the unfortunate experience uh, prior to our parents passing of being their primary caregivers. Absolutely. And so we know firsthand what it is like. And there's a famous quote that's out there. I believe her name is Rosalind Carter. She says there's four types of people in the world, that those that are caregivers, those that will be caregivers, those that um, uh, who are receiving caregiving. And so we find that we're going to be in that position yeah. ourselves. And so yeah. we wanted to be a part of the solution. 
And that's yeah. why we joined Seniors Hope. Seniors. So cool. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're going to get started here. And what's really important about that, right? Y'all have a passion for help. And usually that happens because we went through it with our family or, you know, somebody close to us. And um, I know there's a big call, calling in that, especially with 10,000 baby boomers a day turning 65. And um, it's so important to find quality people that can really have their hearts set into helping others. Because if we live long enough, we're going to want it and need it ourselves. And, um, and I, I do know Bob and Dawn, and I know they're incredible people. They, they make things happen in, in Lake Orion where living is a vacation. And uh, so with that being said, let's start by just giving me a little bit of bit, bit and I know you touched a little bit more on seniors helping seniors. You said it came from Pennsylvania. And yes, how do you serve people? Sure. Um, Seniors Helping Seniors began in Reading, Pennsylvania mm-hmm. in the mid-90s by a couple, um, uh, Philip and uh, Karen Yoakum. Okay. And they had come to the United States after working for about 15 years in the trenches of Calcutta with Mother Teresa. I love her. So that really kind of speaks to our mission. Yeah. So when they came to the United States, they decided to do something in senior care. And when they settled on this type of a, of a model uh, for home care, yeah. they found that there was a lack of consistency for staffing. It's a very difficult job, mm-hmm. um, sometimes a thankless job, to, to be a caregiver. It's very, very difficult. And I always say we can train people, but we can't train you to care. And so it's really something that we say you have to have the heart and spirit to do this type of job. Sure. Because... You have to love on these people as well as giving them the actual care. Yeah, no matter where they're at with that, it could be Alzheimer's, dementia, right? They want to be home and, sure. you know, or the ADLs, activities of daily living, how important, right? The right fit. Yes. Person. Yes. And that's one, of, that's one of the things that I know I share with Joe as far as really loving our, our model because having that senior that can relate to the senior in need is so important. Yes, we have some wonderful caregivers that are younger in age, but this is more of a bonding experience with the senior that's being placed in the care of someone else who knows the aging process. They're experiencing the aging process. And so now they can kind of make that bond. Maybe they remember the same type of movies. Maybe they remember the same type of music. So all of those things that they can create a bond with. So when a case comes in, one of the things we do is not just schedule a caregiver based on their skill set, but also by their personality yeah. to know whether they're really going to mesh with this individual yeah. that, that we're pairing them with. Yeah, that's a big deal. And, and if I could, just to piggyback on that Absolutely. point that Nikki just made, is that is so invaluable. <laughs> so meaning that, yes, you can train a person to help care for a person, but for a person to understand where they are in life, that you cannot train. That has to come through one individual's experience. And so yeah. we have found, even in our short period of time of having our franchise, the importance of a caregiver when they come into the home, they can see and understand that the person receiving the care can be frustrated by a simple thing such as not being able to vacuum or not being able to reach the top cabinet anymore because of an injury. And so having someone who can relate and understand and come alongside and say, hey, I'm going to help you yeah. more of as a friend versus as a hired individual it makes the reception of the care that much better. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it's all about, uh, yeah, it's got to be the right fit. That's basically it, right? The the heart-to-heart type thing. And if you're going to be in the business, you better be in it for all those right reasons. And like chocolate ice cream, it's not for everybody, right? But you are going to match people the best you can to sure. meet those types of needs. And the history, you mentioned Pennsylvania and the franchises and all that. Just give me like a 30-second overview on that. Well, as I say, the, the individuals that started it um, yeah. came, came to the United States and started. Correct. However, yeah. they had a little bit of a hiccup in that um, they initially did not decide to do this as a franchise. They were going to uh, provide it as a 501c3. 
mm-hmm. as a foundation. So they went to a very, very large organization, who I will not name, <laughs> but they went to an extremely large organization, very well known, and told them about their mission with Seniors Helping Seniors. And the organization said, this is absolutely wonderful, but we don't see it as a 501c3 operation. So that's when really? they decided to franchise. So Okay. Yes. Yeah. And working uh, in the business and individual market, those types of things, do people normally come to you? It's, I'm sure it's always a lot of times referrals and that type of thing. Correct. Uh, you know, so... Tell me about that and then, you know, how you get your help, your, you know, qualified people. Sure. So that's two different pieces, okay. but I can address that. Sure. Both. Thank you. So um, the first being um, getting clientele. Absolutely. And so we started with a very grassroots situation. Dawn had already been in business uh, about four years before I came on. So most of it was being able to ensconce herself here into the community, which most people had already known her. She's been, yeah. lived in Lake Orion her entire life. Yeah. Wow. So um, when she brought me on, basically what I did was I started marketing, like I say, in a grassroots capacity. So it was going to different clinics, um, different senior living communities, and other businesses that may not be in the healthcare realm, but their services are provided to seniors. And this is what we see when you brought up the networking, for instance. Yeah. This this is how that sort of works is you'll go to events, mm-hmm. uh, you'll meet people through other types of events that you can pair with and refer to and, and, and back to um, that have some sort of service that they are providing to the senior. So, for instance, somebody like yourself that does insurance, mm-hmm. uh, we, uh, we know that many times when seniors are looking at their Medicare and their secondary insurances, that they need help because it's constant. It's a fluid situation now where it wasn't, say, 10 or 20 years ago. So they're constantly looking at their financial capacity and what they need for their insurance and other things like that. So anyone who really provides a service to seniors is someone that we try to connect with over time. Now, as far as our caregivers, um, we do have an individual that builds our team uh, that works very closely um, with our administrator that takes care of all the cases. So we know where we're looking for them as far as geographically. And we also know where we're getting so many of our referrals already from that we need to tap into that to maintain those relationships. So that's where my job comes in, basically, is making sure that we're really connecting within the community, the business community itself, but also in the healthcare community. Right. Do you get um, certain people, let's just, you know, I, I sometimes think of even some close you know, friends I have mm-hmm. where they want to volunteer their time, they retired and that type of mm-hmm. thing. Uh, does that happen within, I think that's one of the benefits of seniors helping seniors. Correct, correct. And so, yes, in fact, if, if you wanted to, to speak to Sure. That. Go on, Joe. Well, interestingly enough, that this just happened the other day. We had a husband and wife call us. Uh, they mm-hmm. actually saw an advertisement that we did there in our area in the Farmington, Farmington Hills, Novi area, west side of Oakland County. Yep. Uh, and they also saw us at an event. So as, as Nikki mentioned, we were actually at a senior event at the Farmer's Market in downtown Farmington. Long story short, they called. They said, hey, we're volunteers. We want to help. And then we started to explain to them yeah. the mission. And they are the ideal candidates that we're looking for, active, vibrant seniors yeah. who have a heart to want to help right. and come alongside with us. And we say, you can help, but guess what? We're going to compensate you for it at the same time. Yeah. Um, so that's a majority of where we focus our efforts and intentions on trying to even recruit some of our caregivers nice. are in instances where they're already doing some of the work. Many of them are already out there helping neighbors sure. or helping people at their church. Uh, and providing caregiving services, and we're yeah. letting them know that, and in, in, just as you stated, so you help people see through their insurances mm-hmm. uh, or other benefits that they may have that it could also be paid for as well. Right, yeah. Yeah, so it's interesting. I remember, how, could have been a year ago, right, when Mark, when I, I, I'm in the small Christian 6 a.m. group, and yeah, I'm retired, I don't know what I want to do, this and that, and I'm thinking all these Send them different way. things. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking, well, you know, 
the guy could probably be a great long-term care insurance specialist. <laughs> <laughs> didn't go that direction, and, you know, I didn't even throw that out to him, but it's what's going through my mind. But, you know, the whole volunteering, because I know he's volunteered at Kensington and that type of thing, you know. And um, it's funny, as we're sitting here talking, he probably... Never say never, right? Hey, Mark, by right. the way. That's right. <laughs> yep, absolutely. <clears throat> and um, the selection process, you know, I know, right. I mean, I had some incidents happen with my own mom when she was in Florida, right? Uh, we thought we had the right home giver taking care of her when we're living in Michigan, me and my brothers. And so how do you, you know look at their background and history and all that, no matter who they are, I'm sure. Correct, correct. We have a very strict vetting process. Um, we do <clears throat> criminal background checks. Um, we do uh, their, their uh, driver's license checks, insurance, all of that. Uh, that's actually done every six months, and their criminal background checks uh, every, every year. Every six, really? Okay. So it's... You know, it's very important to us because we do hear stories like that, unfortunately. Sure, yeah. But it's it's not just that, uh, you know, other than that, and, of course, their references from their previous positions. But, again, the individuals who are hiring through Seniors Helping Seniors uh, in, here in Oakland County, um, we, we really tap into their personality mm -hmm. as well as, yeah. uh, you know, how we think they're going to fit with their skill set so it's um it's kind of a blend of things and the, the two individuals that chiefly support that at our office are people who have done it for years so they can typically spot in that even in that first interview much less the second whether or not this is an individual that's going to be able to fit on our team and remain with us yeah. um in in our office specifically over 70% of my caregivers have been with us over five years. Wow. So, and that's very, very telling because that the position telling. does tend to be a transient position. Absolutely. And yeah. so you don't want a different person knocking on your door every day. Yeah. And that's really Absolutely. one of the big goals with Seniors Helping Seniors is to have consistency in that staffing. Perhaps you have three or four caregivers that see your loved one a couple times a week. We want it as much as we can. We want it to be the same individuals, especially sure. for patients that have memory issues, dementia, Alzheimer's, to have that consistency is very, very important. Yeah. Is there a minimum amount of time that somebody uh, is going to be able to, like four hours, you know, we can send you in if... T you know, typically so. we say four hours, but we really <clears throat> try to work on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. Um, but the majority of the time, yes, it's, it's usually a four-hour shift. Yeah, and if I could, this is just a piggyback on the other point regarding the the vetting of the caregivers. Yeah, one of thank the, you. the asset tests that my wife and I use, uh, she primarily does the hiring. She has a background, a master's in, in human resources, and has done hiring for over the last twenty years. But we look at would we have this person in our home taking care of our parent? Yeah, it's just that simple. And yeah. we try to get that out of that interview, out of the phone call prior to the interview, along with some of the other things that Nikki mentioned with the background check and so forth, and so. If we don't or could not see that person or would not want that person in our home, it just may not be a sure. best fit for us. Not Make, to say you're not a caregiver, just not a caregiver right. for seniors helping seniors. Gotcha, right. Yeah, I mean, just we know that it's not simple mm -hmm. as a caregiver, depending on who you're taking care of and vice versa. Uh, so 70% of the people been with the offer, you said like... Over five years. So... Just in a, like, why, how, how does that, because I know in the market that's usually not the case. Well, again, I think it has to do a lot with our model. Right. Most of the individuals, when I began yeah. 11 years ago, yeah. I'd say that the average age was 64 or 65. <clears throat> mm -hmm. With the advent of COVID, of course, everything has changed. Um, and so basically the model initially was 
50 and over because 50 is considered a senior by ARP, so we <laughs> consider it being a senior. <laughs> so I know I, we're I all looking at our calculators. 30, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it may be, but unfortunately, just the number. The, the government thinks you are a senior. <laughs> so, <laughs> but so, you know, it, that's kind of been bent a little. I'd say most of my caregivers now are probably in their early 50s. But again, I think a lot of it has to do with our vetting process. And many of the that 70% were with us prior to COVID, and they just stayed with us. Um, I was actually speaking with Joe about this before we began, mm-hmm. that um, Dawn and Bob, and I know Sheila and yourself will be the same way, even though healthcare is 24-7, working for a company that understands the balance between work and home life mm-hmm. is so incredibly important. So when we hire our caregivers, we make certain that we are going to work with them and their schedule as much as possible, because we know that most of the people that are caregivers probably have grandchildren like myself. So, you know, they want to have that, that balance and this affords them that. I mean, we do like to see a minimum of 15 to 20 hours a week if they're able, but We also recognize that people have their personal lives, and that's extremely important. And so uh, we're very, very blessed to work with an organization that understands that. So I know there's a lot of different types of services. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing's being at home, but let's just say somebody needs to be taken to bingo or out into the you know to pick up groceries that type of thing you want to that's actually all part of it Um, and so share with what those types of services would be well first off we hear the word home care Mm -hmm. as kind of a catch-all term and there's actually two separate entities there's skilled care Mm -hmm. which would mean you'd have a physical therapist an occupational therapist a nurse those types of things, maybe even a visiting physician, which is considered skilled care. Now, what we do is called private duty care. So private duty care basically encompasses everything non-medical that can take place in a person's day from the point that they get up in the morning, showering, uh, grooming, all of those dressing, all of those types of things, Mm -hmm. which, as you mentioned earlier, ADLs, Mm -hmm. activities of daily living. So it encompasses that. But if they're at home, we can do their shopping. We can run their errands. We can um, provide transportation, like you're talking about, maybe with doctor's appointments, that sort of thing. Um, So, you know, any and all of those things um, that that you would do in your average day, we are helping you and walking alongside of you, and giving you that freedom, but also making sure you're safe, and giving your family the peace of mind that someone is there with them, helping them. We can do up to 24 hours a day. You can, okay. And the overnight shift is an awake shift. They're not sleeping. So I always like to tell people that, because many times if you have live-in care, that individual is, is most likely sleeping for those eight hours. If you have a senior with dementia, yeah. with dementia, excuse me, that is is wakeful in the evening sure. and has sundowners, then you want to have a person who's awake. So those overnight shifts yeah. are awake shifts. Is there requirements uh, as far as how that works? If you're a, a caregiver, you're going to be there 24 hours. Is there any? No, basically what we'll do is we'll break that up either into eight or 10 hour shifts. Okay. Um, it's, it's really best for the caregiver sure. and um, it's, it's best for the person receiving the care because we want to have a person as fresh as possible. So typically an eight, maybe a 10 hour shift, but usually yeah, an eight hour shift. It's kind of like given the pilot, all right, man, go ahead, take off, you know, yeah. you know, come and, back in 48 hour, you know. Well, but the thing that you heard also too, just, is just that there's a team approach, team right? Approach. So uh, that's the thing I know a lot of times individuals will look Families will look to work with an individual, Mm -hmm. and that's what you can find at Seniors Helping Seniors. We'll send an individual caregiver, but if the need as it grows, we have an entire team that can come around and support the need as the need grows. Yeah, and uh, somebody gets in a situation where it's really difficult. Uh, You know, we know that there's adult daycare centers, there's memory care centers, and that type of thing. 
Um, and where it's just hard to control that, right, it's just tough. Mm-hmm. And almost feel like there need to be in more 24-hour care every day. Uh, if that's the case, do you suggest or do you have conversations with whoever the guardian is or the family member of? Yes, absolutely. Um, we have a, a director of care, um, our care coordinator, and she speaks with the, the support in the family, whether it's their children, you know, whomever it is, a spouse. And we will talk with our caregivers during the period of time um, that we are providing the care. And if we see that the patient is declining, we're going to make recommendations to them. So whether that is placement in a community, um, perhaps they need some skilled care, or perhaps they're at a point where they need to speak with someone about hospice, which is a very difficult situ- <clears throat> situation mm-hmm. and a very difficult conversation to have. Um, we'll talk with them about that. And any of those points of care that are out of our purview, we're going to make recommendations of companies that we've worked with that can assist them for that additional care. I see. You know, just real quick, uh, you, and I know it's different in each state. It wouldn't be a lot, but when it comes to pay, you mm-hmm. know, we mentioned that just sure. just an approximate amount, so the listeners have an idea what it would be. I mean, let's, but go ahead. Sure. Well, it varies. Um, again, I know you say you know from state to state, but there are also states that have um, much more in the way of restrictions on how private duty agencies can work. Sure. Um, Michigan is a little looser with that. <clears throat> okay. Um, but um, did you want to? Yeah, you wanna... either one of you, it's fine. Sure. And, and again, so for, for example, in our area, our, our hourly rate that we assess and what we've done, uh, even coming into it, we do what's called a competitive analysis. Yeah. And with that analysis, we will check with other senior care agencies that also offered non-skilled in-home care. So again, mm-hmm. you got to understand the difference when, when people are sure. comparing the services, skilled versus non-skilled. Yep. And so what we found is our rate right now is $30 per hour, okay. which is very competitive. Yeah, we found, is. yeah, in, in, Absolutely. Here in Oakland County, anywhere from 25 yep. to $40 an hour mm-hmm. okay. is the range okay. uh, to yeah. expect. That's right in the, the ballpark for sure, you know. Mm-hmm. All the way in Michigan, outside of Michigan, sure, sure. can get a lot more expensive. And and that's the thing, too, is that um, we are in Oakland County, which, yeah. as we know, is the most affluent county in Michigan mm-hmm. and fifth in the nation, by the way. So um, it's a situation where marketing to this demographic yeah. is a little easier than what yeah. you're going to find in other places. Now, we have you know, individuals in other surrounding counties that may have a little more difficulty. Now, there are different things um, that are a little bit of a caveat to that pricing. One is, is the individual qualified for veterans benefits? Sure. Um, If we're unsure of that, Mm -hmm. um, we can check into that for them uh, because it can be a really arduous process. So we can check into that for them and and make certain whether or not there's something that they're able to to grab. Um, Also, long-term care insurance, as you know. So So good. Yep. So we're going to wrap it up here. I mean, what, what makes a lot of sense with everything we're seeing here, right? What we know is you're experts in what you do. You bring experts to people that need it they're not they're not a mom or a dad you know that that has to do it maybe has to run to school uh to work or they need to take their kids to high school or wherever that is there's nothing more important than having professional formal caregiving needs homemaking needs with a uh, People that are running, you know, working for seniors, helping seniors, because it's a big deal, right? We're, we all want to run our lives. We want to make sure that our families, whoever that loved one is, that they're being taken care of. And so thank you so much for all that. But as we wrap it up, go ahead, Nikki. Why don't you first tell me about how somebody could reach you? And then we're going to have Joe do the same thing. Sure. Um 
if you don't have a pencil and paper when you're seeing this, um, I mean, I can give you the phone number, but if you don't, you can always go to the Internet and Seniors Helping Seniors. Put your zip code in, and that will give you the appropriate office based on location. Because if it's an individual that lives out of our purview, Mm -hmm. there might be another Seniors Helping Seniors that can assist them. So that's my first recommendation. Our office is 248-969-4000 which is our Clarkston office. Okay. Um, but again, I encourage people to look that up because if somebody is, is listening to this that might not even be in this area, right. they put their zip code in, yep. they'll find yep. that this office. This is throughout the U.S. So. Correct. It, and I'm so glad you said that throughout the U.S. So, And that's one of the reasons why we joined the Seniors Helping Seniors mm-hmm. family and team. We not only got a chance to meet Don and Bob here locally here in Michigan and a couple other franchise owners in Michigan, but franchise owners throughout the country. And real quick story, I know we're wrapping up. Mm -hmm. Not too long ago, we met with a young lady who grew up here in Michigan, now lives in North Carolina. Okay. She became in contact with Seniors Helping Seniors in North Carolina who was using it for her, her friend was using it for her mom. Her mom stays here in in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And so she sought us out because she saw what was happening with her friend's mom in North Carolina. So my point in saying all that is, is that that model that has been in place for the last 26 years is the model you'll find in each franchise and that will carry through. And we serve Farmington, Novi, Southfield, and we're at 248-686-1000. Uh, but the best way, as Nikki said, when you go to Seniors Helping Seniors, put in your zip code, it'll lead you to the best location in Europe. Okay. Well, thank you both so much. Thank you for having us. Incredible information uh, that the listener Right. We all need to hear it. And we have friends and family that are going things, through things right now. And so, you know, uh, please reach out to them if you have any questions. All right. They can make a, a difference in your life for you and your loved ones.